Traveling to Australia in the near future and need help with saving for your travels? Follow along in this step-by-step -step tutorial with our Australia Travel Savings Planner. Hi, I'm Dara from Welcome to Travel. We are working holiday and gap year experts over here in Australia. Now, the most common question which we get asked by our future travelers is, how much money do I need for Australia and to go traveling? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go on a step-by-step -step tutorial with our travel savings planner. It's maybe the nerdiest sheet I've ever made, but the best thing which you can get if you are looking at coming over to Australia. So let's jump into it. With the Australia travel savings planner, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna link down below in the description how to get to this URL. Alternatively, you can search us at welcome2.travel and go to info and inspo and you'll see Australia Travel Savings Planner there. Now for the first part, you can do this on a mobile. For most of it, I would recommend a desktop. So if you are watching this on a mobile, save this video and also subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be other videos within our playlist, which is definitely gonna to help towards this Australia Travel Savings Planner. So you've hit the link and now you are on this page. It says the Australia Travel Savings Planner is here to help you with your finances for your gap year, work and holiday, and just generally your travels around Australia. This was put together by the team at Welcome to Travel. It took us <laughs> ages, honestly, to create this, but it's gonna be so, so helpful for you. And we have, we've helped over 20,000 working holiday makers. What does it cover? What you need? Uh, before coming to Australia, how much it will cost you uh, to go traveling, monthly incoming and outgoings before you go traveling, and when you will be able to afford to come to Australia, which is the big question which most future travelers ask us. And so I'm liking the look of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my free travel savings planner here. And hopefully through the art of editing, You will not be able to see my email, but I'm going to go, I agree, and then send. Now, this may take a minute or two, so if it doesn't come into your inbox straight away, don't worry about this. It will come into your inbox. One of the reasons why we created this is because it is so daunting to come to the other side of the world without an idea of how much you need and this really helps like break down everything for you. And as if by magic, here it is in the inbox. So I'm gonna click on this. So your Australia Travel Savings Planner. Hey Daryl, that's me. Congratulations, you've taken the first step towards your travel goals attached to this email. Okay, attached two versions. So we've either got Google Sheets, <clears throat> if you are like me, more of a Gmail kind of person, um, or we've got a printable version as well. Uh, this sheet has all the formulas already entered. So open up this Google sheet. So I'm gonna do this right now. If you are wanting a sheet for Excel, please comment below and we can create one for you as well. Try not to be overwhelmed by this sheet to begin with. And it says in step two, go to file, make a copy. This part is so, so, so important. I keep getting people trying to edit this sheet. This is personalized for you, depending on what country you are living in. So you need to make a copy for yourself. So I'm gonna go make a copy and I am gonna do, I'm gonna put this in my drive, maybe, yeah. And I'm gonna call it Daryl Travel Savings Planner. And then make a copy. Because what you'll find when you go to this sheet originally, you won't be able to edit anything on here because this is the template. And so I've now got my own sheet. Let's just go back to the instructions. Open your new personalized savings plan, edit in line with your goals into a new sheet so that you can use it for your trip. 
Okay, so I don't need this anymore. And I don't need this. Step one, start here. So welcome to your savings plan. This means you're traveling soon. A simple how to fill out the large yellow boxes in step two. So step two, three, three, and seven. Step seven, the calculator. Fill out as many of the yellow boxes as possible in step four. So step four is target setting. Uh, use the links to help you and fill out the yellow boxes in step five, six, and seven every month. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to step two. Step two is the currency converter. So here you need to work out how much AUD is in the currency uh, is in your currency and then add the amount in the yellow box. So I can just go to this hyperlink here and using WISE, which is a currency converter, which we actually uh, would recommend sending money to and from uh, your Australian bank account. On our, on our tours, we do help you with an Australian bank account, but if you're sending it from UK, to Australia or from wherever you are in the world, we would recommend WISE and I can put a link down below. So what I want to know is how much is it in my currency? I'm gonna say, because I am from the UK originally, I'm gonna go British pounds and how much is it in AUD? So all I want is one pound. And what I can see here is it's 1.74. So one English pound will get me $1.74 at the moment. Okay. Now this is gonna be a little bit flexible. And as soon as I change this, you'll see other amounts down here in step four, they'll change. So this is gonna vary a bit throughout your time planning. So just keep an eye on the currency uh, converter as well. You can update this every month uh, when you're looking at uh, coming onto this sheet. Okay, step three, when would you like to go traveling? A big, big, big question, when would you like to go? In how many months until you would like to go traveling? When are you, or slash, when are you going traveling? So some people have already got their flights booked. Some people, it's just an idea. You only need to put in the number of months from when you start using this travel savings plan. So for example, we're filming this in February. Let's say I want to go traveling in December. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, um, so at February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So 10 months, I'm gonna add 10 months here. And you would have seen in here, this went to red. Um, this is because these are the, this is how long we have to save up our savings target. So we will go on to step four, which is target setting. This is where it's going to become a lot clearer and a lot more helpful for how much money you will actually need to come over to Australia. Now, the first row you'll see is visa. And we've got some different options on the drop down. So work and holiday, work and holiday. Visa are very similar, they are the same price, but it just depends on which country you are from. So you can even click on this hyperlink here. And this will take you to the immigration website and let's say holidays, work and holiday. So I want to do visit and tourism. So what's the main purpose of your visit? Let's say I want a work and holiday. I am going to say I am from Canada now. No, I'm not. I'm going to say I'm from the United States of America. Reason being is because they're on a 462. I'm going to say I am from the United Kingdom. And you'll see that this has changed to a 417. 
So this is how much it is. And I've done something completely, completely wrong uh, earlier on. Fudge. Okay, I'm gonna go back to step two and how much AUD is in your currency and then add the amount in the yellow box. So I needed to do AUD to GBP, so that's 0 0.57. I was gonna say that looked very expensive um, for a visa, so it's 0 0.57. Okay, now that looks a lot more achievable. So this amount is in British pounds. Um, now I've changed it to the right one. So it's 200, at the moment it's 290 pounds and 70 pence for you to come over on a working holiday. Now the next row you'll see is the first week traveling. Now we put some options down here. Now these are, this is welcome to Melbourne, welcome to Sydney, Melbourne mini pack, a Sydney mini pack. There are other options as well. The reason why I put these down is we honestly believe these are the best possible, um, this is the best possible way to start off your journey here in Australia. Obviously we're biased, we created these tours, but our travel community is incredible and they, will vouch for us. If you check out the Google reviews, TripAdvisor reviews, and you can have a look at which tour is gonna be best for you, which city you wanna be landing in. And for this, I'm just gonna check out this tour. I go, okay, have a look around, make sure it's the right one for you. And I'm going to say, okay, I want to do Welcome to Sydney. Why? Because it's got my airport transfer, all my accommodation, all these unique experiences, um, all the administrative setup. It has everything, uh, ongoing travel support and job help. It has everything that I need. So I am happy I'm going to be doing that one. Okay, next one is flight. As I said, we are going traveling in 10 months. So that is December. I'm going to say I am looking from London, let's say Heathrow, and I want to, I've decided I want to do Welcome to Sydney, and I want this to be a one-way. Okay, I'm going to, the tours start generally on, on a Sunday and a Thursday. You probably want to get here a couple of days before for the jet lag, so I'm going to say this one. And this will give me some options. Okay, there's China Airlines there, there's Malaysia Airlines. This is 27 hours, 37 hours. Am I feeling a bit bougie? Do I do Singapore Airlines? Okay, I'm gonna say I'm going to do Singapore Airlines. Now, because I'm in Australia, it's come up with the price in Australian dollars. So that's 1447 AUD to GBP. So 832 pounds, let's say. 832 and this is Singapore Airlines on the 1st of December and oh, that's 832. Now I might not have the money just yet to pay for this so re what I would do is I would click on this one, I would select flight, and then I would go track prices. What this will allow you to do then is, want to see more options? Yes, I do. So this will send you emails if the price is going up or down as well. And this is one of the reasons why I like using uh, Google Flights. I used to be a big Skyscanner man. However, Google Flights for me at the moment is 
is ahead of the game. Travel insurance as well. Now, travel insurance is very, very boring, but it is also essential as well. So I'm gonna click on this. This will take you to a page on our website. What countries or regions are you planning on traveling to? Let's say Australia. I am from the United Kingdom. I am coming in first of December and the end date is let's say I'm going to go let's say I'm going to go for the whole year. Oh. Maybe I've gone one day too long there. Okay, 30th of November. How old is the traveler? Now I can put my actual age here, um, but I'll say I'm 28 and get a price. Now this is with World Nomads. World Nomad is a globally recognized insurance company. There are other options as well. When I go traveling, I personally use World Nomads as well for my travel insurance. And every time I have to buy travel insurance, it pains me, but it's definitely worth getting as well because you never know what is around the corner. So I'm just gonna wait for this amount. Again, because I am, so you can choose the plan which you want. And this will give you a lot more information. What you are covered for. And you can pick and choose what which one you would like to do. Because I'm from the north of England, I'm going to go for the cheaper one, let's say. And this is with World Nomads. Okay, there's, I do have a preference of a backpack if you want as well it is the Kathmandu hybrid trolley this is a backpack and also like a wheelie bag also I'm gonna put this in for now um, Kathmandu wheelie trolley um, hybrid in the UK god my spelling is terrible there now it is a little bit more than um, and some other backpacks as well. Again, it really depends on you. Um, accept all cookies. Okay. Sometimes there's specials as well. So that's £245. Maybe this is something which you ask for a Christmas present. Backpack, Kathmandu hybrid. Um, I would recommend checking out our what to pack video as well, which we'll link in this video. Now the travel bucket list. You may have all these different ideas of what you want to do when you come out to Australia, but you actually don't know how much it's gonna cost. So what you can do here, which is really, really cool, is I'm gonna click on this link. And what this will allow you to do is you can have a meeting with one of our team for absolutely free, just so that you can work out how much it is gonna be for you to go traveling and get a little bit of inspiration as well for, I don't know, the East Coast of Australia. Boom, I will do my actual one. And I'm going to say, I like the sound of doing a bus. What major destinations are a must for you? Now, if you've seen any of our other videos, you may have already been inspired of the different destinations. You can say Fraser with Sunday's Outback, Great Barrier Reef. Um, what are your rough travel dates? I'm going to say December. 2023. Do you have any specific questions, comments you have for our team? Wondering how much a dream trip 
would cost. I agree. And then confirm. Cool. So I've uh, booking confirmed. You are booked with Dylan Block. So Dylan is part of the Melbourne team and it can go to any one of our team that are based here in Australia. They've been traveling before. They've helped hundreds of thousands of travelers, not 100,000 travelers, hundreds or thousands of travelers. And I've got a meeting with him on the 23rd of February. And it's just to help you work out what you would like to do. And that is completely free. So let's say I've had a meeting with Dylan and he's worked out a price for me in Australian dollars. And then what we're gonna do is convert it to British pounds. Let's just do like a rough idea. Um, let's say I want to do a massive trip. So I know this is gonna be a little bit more expensive. It's gonna be like 3,000 pounds. Alongside this, we will, we will also let you know like your basic spends as well. So, okay, your accommodation and all your experiences are gonna cost X amount, but the basic spends which you will need will be Y amount. We'll break that down for you in the email. Let's say 2000, just so that you've got. And then also the safety net. We'll put this down in an email as well for you once you've had your one-on-one. -on -one. And again, everybody is so different. This is personalized to you. And I'm just trying to do some like rough figures here. So as we've been doing this over here on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna take away this thousand then you'll see that all these are changing here. A thousand, okay? And this is saying how much I would need at the moment to go traveling. Now, the issue here is I uh, skipped a step and I didn't actually say how much savings I've got at the moment. Now, I'm gonna say I have 1,000 pound and this will then reduce the whole amount here. From here, you can say yes. Oh, that has changed. Oh, that's why. So rather than saying yes, you need to put in the amount which you paid. So let's say I paid off my working holiday I have paid off my trip. Even if you haven't paid off the whole amount, even if you have paid like just the deposit, which is 99 Australian dollars. So let's say this is 60 pounds. This will reduce everything in here. So as you're like planning and paying off certain things, this will all come out as well which is really, really cool. But let's just say I've just got my work and holiday. I pay my deposit for the Welcome to Sydney tour. I am tracking my flights. I haven't got my insurance yet. I have asked nicely for a Kathmandu hybrid uh, backpack. And this is my travel bucket list as well. Fill out as many of the yellow boxes in step four. Use the links to help you. Fill out the yellow boxes in step five, six, and seven every month. Now this is where this will help you get to your savings goal. So at the moment, my monthly target, I can see here for saving is 7,100, uh, sorry, 711 and 53 cents. This is how much I want to be saving each month for me to be able to have that dream, 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 dream trip. So I need to think of what I've got incoming into my bank. So I'm gonna look at my wages after tax. Now, because this is individual and customized to you, I don't know how much your uh, wages are after tax. Be weird if I did. But let's say 300 pound a week. So let's do that over four weeks. So three, six, nine, 12. So I am uh, and this is after tax, so I've got 
1200 pound each month coming into uh, in my incoming now on here i've got selling items this is quite important maybe towards the latter end of your monthly incomings and outgoings and a lot of people do end up selling quite a few things before they come traveling let's say if you're coming over on a working holiday and you have a car you're probably not going to need that car because you're going traveling for a whole year so it could be a case of going all right i'm going to sell my car and it could be worth two thousand for example and this will be making a total sum down here at the bottom now for the first month we're not going to worry too much about that birthday money it might be birthday coming up and like oh maybe it's i've got 200 pound coming in because i'm going to ask all my family friends for money this year because i'm going traveling christmas money and there could be extra money you might be making money on the side maybe you've got like a little bit of a side hustle as well and you could be updating this and going okay maybe my creative job like well side hustle i am making 50 pound and then there could be extra money which you have incoming which you just want to be adding down here and it will calculate the total amount here then we need to go to monthly outgoings which is the scary part because then you work out exactly how much you're going to be spending a month and whether you are saving money or you're losing money but this will help you identify which one you need to cut out so let's look at rent rent is the biggest outgoing for everybody now when i first came traveling the year before i flew out to south africa where i first went traveling i moved in with my mum and dad because it ended up saving me a hell of a lot of money now for rent depending on where you are in the country where you are in the world i would say let's say it's a 140 360 i'm gonna say i'm spending 480 pound on rent now weekly food um well it probably shouldn't be called weekly food but this is um because it's monthly outgoing so i might edit that but let's say i am spending let's say 75 150 225 let's say 300 i want you to go through literally how much you are spending and add it into here the year before you go traveling isn't going to be the most fun year ever really look at this and go okay what do what money do i not need to be spending so that i can go and go sky skydiving in australia go see the great Barrier reef this is you going to live your dream so there's going to be some sacrifices which you need to make now i'm going to say going out a month i am spending 100 pound netflix i'm spending 10 pound i'm going to put in I've got 1,450 pounds coming in and total amount saved is 1,450. However, we do have outgoings and this is 940. Okay, so at the moment I saved 510, which is below my target. So at the moment it's 711, uh, 711 pounds 53. Let's say this ended up, let's say I, I cut out going out. It ended up being 840. Total amount saved is 610. Let's say I moved back in with my parents and they've been kind enough for me not to pay rent. And then it's 360. And now I'm saving £1,090 a month, where my target is a 711.53. But that's for the first month. So at the moment, that's below my target. 
So you come back bit onto this sheet in month two and go, okay, I didn't hit my target. It was 700, 711 pounds and 53 pence. What can I do? Can I ask for more hours at work? Can I cut back on rent? Do I need to go out? Because not every month you are going to be, it's not going to be your birthday every month. So at the moment, that's £1,250. Now, I'm going to say I've been asking for more shifts at work because I was below my savings target. And I am going to go out half the amount of time in my second month. And then this gets me to 1,450 and 890. Still, this is, I've made 50 pounds more, but as you can see, the monthly target is going up and up and up. So I might need to do a little bit something more for me to be able to get that dream, dream trip of mine. So I come back to this on month three and I'm gonna go and do something drastic. I am gonna move in with my parents. I have got the same job. My weekly food has been cut back a little bit and I am now, I've still got the same amount of shifts, 1,450. And I'm only spending 310. Now you can see the difference there. So in month nine, because I've worked out all my finances, it will show you here, like I have made over my target. So my target was 8,115 uh, £8, pound, and I've ended up saving 10,050 pounds. Now, I would highly, highly, highly recommend having enough money when you first arrive in Australia to go traveling, uh, go traveling first. So you arrive in the city that you like uh, the best. So let's say for, in this example, it's Sydney. And then once you have traveled and you're on a working holiday, you can then go back to the place which you love the most and save up a lot more money because the wage over here in Australia is incredible. But to get here on a working holiday, you need to do a little bit of work to make sure that you have enough savings because there's nothing worse coming over to the other side of the world and feeling a little bit worried and still daunted um, about how much money you have. But having a working holiday, you can definitely save up that money. Now, this is a really good example. And again, this is personalized to me and my situation in this scenario. But if you do have any questions, please put them in the comments below. But the most important thing is for you to work out like how much you will be spending, how much you've got coming in and how much you've got going out. And this will give you a really, really clear indicator of when you can come traveling to Australia. I hope that's been really helpful. We've made an entire playlist on this channel to help you with all your Australia work and holiday needs. So what I would recommend is subscribing and watch all the videos. And if you do have any questions, please comment them below and we'll be answering them. Thank you and I hope that helps.